Can I survive with $50 in the world's most visited city? <laughs> Here are the rules. I have $50 to spend on whatever I want for the day, but that includes all my food, transportation, and attractions. This is Bangkok, Thailand. To start off the day, I open this app and order a motorbike. This is like Uber, but it's called Grab, and it's a great way to get around here. And the price of a 10 minute ride is 50 cents. You could order cars from this app for just a couple of dollars, but you might be stuck in traffic for a while. $50 is equal to about 1,750 Thai baht. And as of today, $1 is equal to 30 Thai baht. I start to wander around this local market. Bangkok is famous for what's called floating markets, shops and food stalls that are raised above water. This man is selling boat rides and he tells me it will cost 500 Thai baht. I tried to negotiate, but he said, no, 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 it's a fixed price. The price, $14. But the good news is it looks like it's just gonna be me. It's really cool to see how the homes are raised and people sell things. This tour is great because of the variety. You start by seeing local homes, then it brings you to Bangkok's main river where you see much bigger boats and iconic landmarks. It ends of you passing by Big Buddha. After the boat ride, I walk around this really cool neighborhood where it's mostly locals but also small little shops too. Then I come to this place called Artist's House. Many people come here for a coffee and to maybe do a little art project. You can even buy supplies with your coffee. Okay, that's tempting, but I gotta watch my budget for today, so instead, I'm just gonna get a Thai iced tea. The price? $2. Now, what makes Thai iced tea orange? Well, it's because of the spices they use, like star anise, tamarind, and cardamom. Next, I go for a little walk to the metro. Bangkok's metro is super modern, clean, and in my experience, not overly crowded. This is a great alternative to sitting in traffic. I get my ticket, and the price? 50 cents. Recently, the government introduced a new banknote for the 20 Thai baht. It's made of polymer, which is harder to replicate than paper, and it lasts longer. But the metro station kiosk will not take the new banknote, so you gotta use the old paper version. So I'm gonna have to use the paper one. Thank God I have the paper version. So I get on the metro. It's super nice and convenient, and I'll be honest, the air conditioning feels so good because Bangkok is pretty hot and humid. I walk for a few minutes until I reach Wat Po. This is one of the most popular and famous temples to visit in Bangkok, and it's an absolute must visit. The price to enter, $5.50. Wat Po means the temple of the reclining Buddha. This is one of the most important Buddhist temples, and it's absolutely beautiful. Inside, you will see a 46 meter reclining Buddha, and it's covered in gold leaf. It's quite crowded and for obvious reasons. They're not that strict with the dress code though. They said that men are okay to wear shorts, women will have to wear something else like pants. Next, I see this table where you can get coins and put them in buckets. So I decide to do it and the price is 50 cents. So in the bowl, you get 108 coins with the intent of making a wish when you drop a coin in each pot. Okay, that is a lot of wishes, but why 108? Well, 108 represents the auspicious characters of Buddha. See, visitors can drop them as they're believed to bring good fortune and also helps the monks to maintain the temples. After the reclining Buddha, I see a few other temples on this site and it's all included in the fee already. Okay, it's 1 p.m. and I literally have not eaten anything yet. This is insane because Thailand is famous for its food options. So I cross the street and see this restaurant called Hello Sit Down. What a weird name, but let's give it a try. I start by ordering a fresh coconut. So coconut water is so popular now in the West, but how cool is it to actually drink from an actual coconut itself? 50 cents. For my meal, I order the classic Thai staple, a pad thai. This is a stir fry noodle dish commonly served as street food because it can be made from a food cart. Now it's usually served with shrimp, peanuts, scrambled eggs, and bean sprouts, but I swap the shrimp with chicken. The price, $2.50. $2.50 for a sit-down lunch and pad thai. I'm starting to see why this is the world's most visited city. Not only is it cheap, but it's absolutely delicious. Perhaps the best pad thai I have ever had. It's super fresh and the ingredients and flavors are just perfect. Next, I walk around a little bit and head to the museum. And I'm in luck because the exhibit that's on right now is all about Thai culture. This is Museum Siam. It's a new age museum for educating the next generation. In the exhibit, you learn all about the clothes of Thai people 
the food, and even the language. You learn what is really Thai and what was imported or brought in from other cultures. The price? $3. And that even includes an audio guide, which makes a huge difference as you go about the museum because you learn so much more in the different sections. Downstairs, I happen to see an exhibit called Fast Fashion. This explores how we are buying more clothes than ever, and this is causing problems to the planet. See, I had no idea it requires this much water just to produce a single cotton shirt. There's also a section that shows how we can reduce our footprint. Okay, now I'm craving something sweet, and I see this sign for ice cream in a coconut. I need to try this. I sit down and order it, and it comes with three scoops of coconut-flavored ice cream peanuts in a real fresh coconut, which means that you can add some coconut meat into each bite. This tastes incredible. Coconut ice cream in a coconut? $2. So you can't come to Thailand and not get a Thai massage, so I see this place and decide to give it a try. Here you're given a set of clothes to wear, and it's commonly done on a pad on the floor rather than a typical raised massage bed. But a Thai massage is far from relaxing. It can even be a bit painful because it combines acupressure, Indian Ayurvedic principles, and even some assisted yoga postures. Most massages are super calming, but not this one. This is not what I want, but definitely what my body needs. I'm convinced this woman is trying to torture me, but after I'm done, I'm actually feeling amazing and definitely grateful for this. The price of a one hour massage, $9. Okay, that's a good chunk of my entire budget for the day, but I mean, I just got a one hour massage for $9. In the US, that would cost like $100. By now it's getting dark outside, so I head to Chinatown. This is one of the best places in Bangkok to find street food, and the culture is super exciting here. Everywhere you look, it's pretty aesthetic, and each food stand, it's kinda like you're discovering something new. The only issue is that there's not really anywhere to actually sit. So instead of going to a food stand, I find this restaurant that provides seating. I want to try something new instead of the Thai classics like green curry. So I order this fried noodle crispy egg seafood dish. It kind of reminds me of a pancake and under this you have some really nice seafood and noodles. The price? $3. I was not expecting this dinner to be so cheap and I'm so happy because I still have money for other things. The taste of this is good, but I'm still happy I tried something new. As I'm eating dinner, it starts pouring rain, and I'm totally not prepared for this. Rainy season in Thailand is usually between July and October, but oftentimes the rain lasts only a few hours, not the entire day. Ah, so it started raining during the dinner, so I had to buy one of these to protect myself from the rain. The price is $1. I still hope I have enough money left for a mango sticky rice and maybe a tuk-tuk ride, but it might be a little bit hard at this point. So I'm craving something sweet now, and there is a very famous dessert here in Thailand I need to try. Uh, no. Wow, I really need it. I've heard it's delicious. I was hoping to see it at a street cart, but I only see it at an actual sit-down restaurant. Uh, mango sticky rice? Yeah. You have it? Yeah. Oh. Finally, I found a place with mango sticky rice. And it's raining so hard, I'm gonna stop looking for it any longer and just commit to this place. I order the mango sticky rice. This combines freshly sliced mango with gluttonous rice and coconut milk. It's been a popular Thai dessert for centuries. Okay, I know rice for dessert may sound weird, but it's so sweet that it's actually really incredible. And the combination of the mango with the rice is just perfect. A mango sticky rice with some coconut in a grungy basement? $3. All right, this doesn't look that good. Uh, usually I see mango and sticky rice is made fresh to order. The way that this rice is formed, I feel like it just was like defrosted or something, but let's give this a try. Not bad, actually. Not bad at all. I'm gonna definitely eat this whole thing. But honestly, mango sticky rice is kind of like Pizza, even bad pizza is still good pizza. It's really hard not for it to be good. So I'm gonna enjoy this. And let's dip it a little in the coconut, and there you go. Now, that's a lot for Thailand, because remember, my lunch pad Thai was only $2.50. I also think that this mango is not the freshest. So remember, just because you're eating food in Thailand does not mean every restaurant will be the best and most authentic. But at least I got to try it. It's raining so hard that unfortunately I won't be exploring any more of Chinatown, and I have to head back to my hotel. So today I took a motorbike, a metro, but there is one more mode of transportation that I need to try. Okay, this is called a tuk-tuk. It's popular for both 
locals and tourists, it's a lot cheaper than an actual car, making it a good source of income for the drivers. But there is no meter or fixed price. You just need to negotiate the price with your driver. So he said 200, but I only have 120 baht left. He actually agreed. So with my last remaining $3, I'm gonna ride in a tuk-tuk. And that is a wrap for my day in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm so excited that I actually made it with $50 and nothing was compromised. I got my mango sticky rice, even though it wasn't the best. I got a tuk-tuk ride and I'm now just ending the day, heading to my hotel to rest because I'm a bit tired. It was a lot of walking and it was very hot and humid. To stay hydrated, drink lots of water. Like I had that coconut at lunch, which was delicious. Overall, my highlight was probably the floating market. I can't believe that I had the boat all to myself and it was so interesting and cool to see how some people live. And um, it was just so unique. I mean, there was nowhere in the world like that. Nowhere in the world that I've been before where you can actually see people living on water and you can get on a boat and like see the city through such a cool lens. I also really liked the artist house. It had an interesting vibe and it was cool to see locals having coffee and doing art. My other highlight was the massage. Even though it was very painful during, I felt really, really good afterwards and really, really, really relaxed. So definitely make sure you get a Thai massage. And last but not least, my third highlight was that Pad Thai. Absolutely delicious. One of the best Pad Thais I've ever had. And I still can't believe how cheap it was. As for the things I didn't love, uh, dinner was okay. It wasn't the best thing I had. I wanted to try something new and unique, so I'm glad I tried it. But it really wasn't that great. And the other thing I didn't love was the mango sticky rice. I have had it before, and it's usually a little bit more fresh than, it, than it's supposed to be. Um, but all in all, a really good day. And it was also amazing getting to try so many different modes of transportation. Right now I'm on a tuk-tuk. I got to also take the metro, which was pleasantly really surprisingly nice, and also take a motorbike, which, hey, do that at your own risk. But I want to know, what do you think? Bangkok is one of the world's most popular cities, so have you been here? What was your highlight? Let me know in the comments, and while you're at it, check out more videos in this series. Let me know where you think I should go next, and what's my budget? While you're at it, check out more of my videos from around the world, and don't forget to follow.